Welcome, thanks for joining me, astrologer Patrick Arundel, for the latest of my deep dive series. Today I'm going to explore a truly powerful astrological event, the Clash of the Malefics. This is when Mars, the planet of passion, meets in an exact conjunction or unifies with Saturn, the planet of restriction. This occurs on April the 10th in the watery sign of Pisces. Now, when Mars and Saturn meet, it's rather like trying to drive with the handbrake on. You can do it, but it creates a lot of resistance. I'm going to unpack all of this for you, explore why they're called the malefics, the stories attached to that, but also I'm going to share with you the event chart from a Placidus viewpoint, which has an ascendant in the sign of Scorpio and parks Mars and Saturn in the fourth house, which is very emotional. I'm also going to look at the event from a solar perspective with the first point at nought degrees Aries and that parks them in house 12, also very psychological, but that's very much in keeping with the energies of the host Pisces. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for joining us. I say us because this is very much a community. If you have any thoughts, please feel free to share them. If you're a returning visitor, I really appreciate all your views and interaction. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did now. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. Every time I drop a video, you'll get an alert from YouTube. Also, I'd like to share with you about my free daily written horoscope. You can subscribe to these by clicking on the link beneath this video, but I've been writing these for near 30 years. I'm featured in one of Britain's most read daily newspapers and websites the world over. But I also provide an overview of the dominating planetary influence of each day. So that gives you a wider perspective of what's going on. I'm also a consultant astrologer. If you'd like to check out my one-to-ones, why not look at my testimonials? I don't edit them, they just come in and I put them as is on my website. See what people have found working with me. Finally, please stay with me. I will go through each of the 12 zodiac signs from Aries through to Pisces to give you a flavour of what you can expect, which you can relate to in terms of your ascendant, the sun, or the moon. Now on the screen now, I'm showing the event chart based on Greenwich. Now I'm not showing Greenwich because I'm based in Britain, it's because it is the primary meridian. And this gives us an ascendant at 10 degrees and 55 in the passionate Scorpio, a water sign. And this occurs at 8.35 p.m. Universal. You can see that Mars, the traditional ruler of Scorpio, side by side with Saturn in the fourth house. The fourth house is very much to do with where we want shelter. It's the nighttime part of a chart. It's where we may withdraw a little bit. We're more concerned with security, protection, but we can be a little bit defensive. And Mars is not so good in the fourth house, to be honest. Now, Saturn in the fourth house can make us more concerned with the physical side of our security, so where we live. So one of the things we will have to watch is that we're not prickly and defensive if something comes up where there is a difference of opinion. Next up is the event chart from a solar perspective. We can all relate to this, and Mars and Saturn are in house 12. I really like to relate through this chart because if we think about the overall cycle of the planets, Saturn is coming to the end of its complete cycle in the sign of Pisces, which began around about 28 years ago in the sign of Aries. So we're really having a chance to review all we've achieved over those past 28 uh, years. Saturn takes 29 and a half years to go through its full cycle. Mars, on the other hand, takes 1.88 years, or around about 98 weeks. But they're coming together in the 12th house is deeply psychological. The fourth house is very much to do with protection, security, family, our inner emotional world. The 12th house in traditional astrology can be hidden enemies. But also I feel that Mars 
since it entered the sign of Pisces on the 23rd of March, it can stir up subconscious angers. Issues that we thought we dealt with can actually be stirred in quite a powerful way. At times this can make us quite tearful and at other times can see our emotions or our anger very close to the surface. Now one of the great things about Mars and Saturn together, the greater malefics, Mars being the lesser, Saturn the greater, the Greeks called them broadly the bad doers. Now the good guys, Venus and Jupiter, the lesser and greater benefits, were known as the good doers. So that's really cute. But bad doers, that really gives us an idea that the greater malefics together can be quite tricky because of the explosive nature of Mars being restricted by the cold, limiting, isolating, dark energy of Saturn. Now Saturn is of course very much to do with karma and until we knew about Neptune it was supposed to be the last visible planet. So we saw it as being the limit of our knowledge and that meant that anything beyond it felt fearful. Also, another thing to think about is the sign of Pisces is limitless because of the energy of Neptune, the co-ruler. Now, the traditional ruler of Pisces was actually Jupiter, and that's very much to do with the spiritual and philosophical energy of the sign. So Saturn being in Pisces is really pushing us to take more note of our emotional, psychological uh, energies, to integrate them not reject them. So Mars comes along and is very provocative. If we think about the go-getting energies of Mars, in the sign of Pisces, the water of Pisces dilutes the raw, fiery power of Mars in terms of its rulership of Aries. But of course Mars, like I mentioned before, is the co-ruler, the traditional ruler of Scorpio, which is a water sign. And some astrologers would say there is a mutual receptivity. But I think Mars in Pisces loses its drive. It becomes much more bogged down. However, people who do have Mars in Pisces or the 12th house often do jobs that are linked to water. Now, I did mention this briefly in my Mars special video, even deep sea divers could have Mars in Pisces or the 12th house. But of course Mars can lack a little bit of structure and discipline which Saturn can bring to the equation. But Mars can get very tested by the resistance of Saturn and what we need to do in order to deal with this aspect is to narrow our focus very very tightly and focus truly honestly on that psychological and subconscious domain. So it's a great opportunity to look at our shadow sides. We may feel we don't have any baggage. Uh, we may feel that we're completely uh, evolved in a very solid way, but being a uh, person, person kind as we are, we are full of vulnerabilities and things can trigger us. And this is an aspect which can lead to an enormous outpouring of anger if someone does trigger us. And part of the reason is Mars is really miserable because Saturn is slowing it down, which makes it hyper frustrated. So anger and irritability can be very much part of this aspect. But in a constructive way, people who are athletes, for example, often have this aspect because it gives them the desire, Mars, but also the self-discipline, Saturn, to meld the two, uh, two energies together to apply themselves in a really consistent way. So lots of training, lots of practice. And the physicality of Mars is tempered by that dedicated energy of Saturn, which of course rules time as well. So the other thing we could experience over the next few days is a big drop off in physical vitality and our fears and concerns and anxieties can get the upper hand. So by putting this in context, we can see that actually this is a test. It's a test for how far we've come with Saturn making its way around the entire zodiac. And it's asking Mars really to evolve and join in with those experiences and knowledges that Saturn has brought to us. 
Now this event occurs in the second decan of the sign of Pisces, which is subruled by the emotional energies of the moon. We've already seen from the event chart based on Placidus that Mars and Saturn are in the fourth house, very lunar orientated, very moon cancer orientated. So that's emphasized furthermore by the decan. But if you do have mutable planets, anything from 11 to around about 17 degrees, in the signs of Pisces itself, Gemini, Virgo or Sagittarius, you're going to feel this event much more strongly. Now that's because of the angularity. So in the case of Pisces, conjunction, Gemini and Sagittarius the square and Virgo the opposition. Please stay with me as I go through each of the 12 zodiac signs from Aries through to Pisces. However, if you would like to ascend above this zodiac forecast, if you give me three pieces of personal birth data, time, date and place, I can produce for you your life roadmap report. This will give you searing insights into the influences that have played out in your life so far, but also the patterns, but a much more intimate understanding of those can help you to flourish much more effectively future forwards. In my special package of 30% off, you can also get your 12 month transits. That's the moving planets in the sky interacting with your personal blueprint. If you've already benefited from that package, why not check out your draconic alternative? This is based on moving the, the north node to nought degrees, the vernal point in Aries, which creates your soul or karmic chart, the energy that you arrive at this planet with. The natal chart is very much the fruits of the roots of that draconic chart. Again, 30% off and a 12 month forecast. Please see beneath this video for more. So Aries, it's been a very exciting time for you of late with the total solar eclipse, but you've also had Mercury in your sign and more recently Venus. And all of that's given you a lot of thrust in terms of your self-expression, being in the moment, really expressing yourself in a very positive way. But Mars, of course, is your ruler. So having him in your 12th house suggests there may be something that's still tugging at your attention. Maybe it's a relationship that's come to a close fairly recently. Maybe you started to think about an old relationship that ended some while ago and some injustices from that have come up in your emotions or will do now in a very potent way. Therefore, it's going to be difficult to stay with that total solar eclipse energy, which is urging you to showcase what makes you unique, have more confidence in terms of your individual identity because of Chiron being in the mix. So it just depends on your unique circumstances. But if something is just not feeling quite right in your situation, don't ignore it. It's vital that we bring that energy in, that 12th house energy in, and try and integrate it. And one of the things you need to watch more than anything else is that you're not judging your vulnerabilities, or for that matter, anybody else's. Because that's part of the human form. If we didn't have some senses of when danger or threat were there, we would never have evolved. We wouldn't have survived. So if there are some or there is one person around you that you don't entirely trust, this could be someone who doesn't have the best of intentions. So you need to keep that person very much at an arm's length. Be protective of yourself. But there could be some very exciting strands developing for you, but just stay very joined up, be very holistic about where you are. And if you are someone, funnily enough, using that word holistic, who's very interested in alternative medicine, this would be a marvelous time to embrace that because it is less mainstream, but it is much more to do with treating the person as a whole. So therefore, the psychological dimension of our physical health is very much part of the process. So Taurus, the total solar eclipse for you may have made you much more conscious of the need to take a little bit of a breather, just have a pause, just reflect on where you're heading because the 12th house energy is a time to just be a little bit more meditative. 
But Mars, of course, in the 11th house can be brilliant for your social situation. And perhaps since March the 23rd, when Mars moved into Pisces, there may have been a spark. You may have found yourself being some kind of leader or someone who's connected other people. But this combination with Saturn is truly tricky. Saturn has been affecting your future hopes and your friendships for just over a year. It's possible that some people have made way and that may have become much more obvious quite recently. You may have appreciated that it's not that you're not seeing people physically, it's maybe that their absence spiritually and emotionally, you're not feeling that they're attuned to you. Perhaps you're not attuned to some other people, perhaps it's you who's separating yourself. So this could be a time when you are cutting those proverbial cords, because anybody who is in your world, in terms of friendships, in terms of associates or your network, has to be someone who's really meaningful. Because one of the things about Mars applying to Saturn is it makes us less, gives us less time, we're less, we have less availability. And because you are already going through a period of deep psychological reflection, at this present time, if there is somebody who doesn't get it, uh, doesn't understand it, is not necessarily in such in a positive way, it's more like, where have you been? Rather than, are you okay? So the you okay people will go through to the next round of your life. The people who don't get it are resentful or feel that you're resisting them are the people that perhaps as time has come to a close in your situation. Gemini, when Mars burst into your 10th house on March the 23rd, it really gave you an opportunity to strut your stuff in a much more assertive way. But just think about the responsibilities and obligations you've got. Think about your goals and ambitions. They don't have to be professional. Not everybody wants to be a captain of industry or run their own enterprise. But Whatever your goals and ambitions are, they may be tempered by this event. And part of the reason for that is sometimes when we achieve, and I've mentioned this recently before, so I apologise if it's repeating myself, but I think it's really relevant. Sometimes when we're just getting to that point of achievement on something we set out to see some while before, we've actually changed, we've evolved. So therefore our relationship to that success is not the same. So it's possible you could reach a high point in your career at this time, but just at the moment when Mercury, your ruler, is in retrograde in the part of your situation to do with your longer term plan, but also to do with your higher ideals. So when it comes to success, responsibilities, I feel it needs to feel right at the present time. Having a good job, a good salary, a big car, a nice house are all perfectly legitimate things to pursue, but at the moment for you, and this is what Chiron is calling out to you through the total solar eclipse, it has to take you to a place which really meets your higher hopes and expectations. So those hard, rather more tangible material goals may be available to you at the moment, but what you're really yearning for is that deeper meaning. And that can be a much true about the people you're linking with as your professional interactions too. So Cancer, what has been your experience of Saturn over the last year since he arrived in your sister water sign of Pisces? This is house nine for you, which is to do with long distance travel, can be to do with freedom and independence, also higher education, it can be to do with learning a foreign language or uh, any interest you've got overseas, particularly linked to property, to be honest, because of Saturn being in the ninth house. If you buy and sell things that go across borders, Saturn may have influenced all of those, but also it may have influenced the contractual matter. So if you've experienced someone who's been quite unfair, uh, someone who only sees the situation from their perspective, that may have been quite difficult to get through. But also, you could just feel whatever your physical circumstances penned in. And if that is the case, or you are experiencing someone at work or in your community or in your family 
who are not respecting the amount of wisdom and experience you bring to your role, that could cause a lot of exasperation with Mars applying to Saturn. And although by nature you do prefer to avoid outright confrontation, because of the ninth house being very much about higher truths, you might surprise yourself by being more direct and perhaps you may need to seek the support of a professional, such as a solicitor. But if you are traveling anywhere over the next few days, just chill out, play some music or listen to a, a, a nice conversation and enjoy the more scenic route. I really wouldn't want to push to get from A to B in a blind in a rush because that's not going to be a good thing to do, to be honest. And if there is somebody that you're dealing with in terms of your interaction with the world, which comes from all that energy in the sign of Aries, I think what Mars applying to Saturn is basically saying to you is make sure that you do have a minimum point that you will accept. And if someone is pushing beyond that point, it will be time to say no. So be prepared to stand tall in terms of your higher values through this particular aspect. Leo, there's so much excitement around your chart at the moment. A lot of drama, adventure, the desire to shake things up, be much more spontaneous. There's so much to, to really appreciate. Of course, Mercury is retrograde. And the ninth house where that collective is can be about contracts. And the eighth house where Mars applies to Saturn can be about money. And it can also be to do with things like shares and assets and uh, deeper instruments of finance. So with Mars moving on to that point, if you're experiencing someone who's not playing it fair, the ninth house energy where you have all those Aries energies, that could see you wanting to be much more resistant to bend into what another person wants. But then again, the eighth house can be about intimacy. In plain English, it can be about sex. And if you're in a relationship which lacks that deeper spiritual or intimate connection, I think Mars can give you more desire and yearning to have that in your life. And of course, all the ninth house energies can give you a lust for freedom. So we can't just look at Mars applying to Saturn in isolation. We have to see the big picture. But certainly if there's something you're really wanting financially or intimately at the moment, and that needs not being met, the chances are you're going to want to be more experimental and break out in order to get your needs met. So Virgo, since Saturn moved into your seventh house, your sector of relating, but also the sector where we come into contact with others, where we try to find that midpoint between our needs and theirs, things may have been a little bit tense. There may have been a relationship that's come to a close, but then again, you may have set your boundaries more firmly and more robustly, which could have been a good thing. Maybe you've met someone new and this is the real deal because they're just as committed as you. There's never a one dimensional approach to astrology, but certainly Mars moving into the seventh house is a really interesting one because in natal astrology, if someone has Mars on the seventh house cusp, they don't necessarily have the most settled love relationships. They can be much more assertive about wanting to get their own way. And perhaps that's something you're about to show somebody else. So if there is somebody on your celestial horizon that you fancy, Mars can give you that extra incentive to step outside your comfort zone, overcome your reticence or shyness to really front it up and see what you can do to move things forwards. But if you are in a long-term relationship, all the eighth house energy in Aries is really interesting. And that includes, of course, your ruler Mercury, which is in a retrograde. Perhaps some issues can come into the open now, things that maybe one of you has found a bit more difficult to say uh, could be to do with some observations that are more psychological, could be do, to do with a secret or two. But if you do need to say it, say it and try and clear the air. The seventh house is very Libra. Mars doesn't work so well in Libra. It's known as detrimented. But for you, this can help you to be much more upfront in representing what you want 
and demanding in a way that people respect you. But of course, it's important when it comes to respect that we earn it as well as demand it. So Libra, if you think back to 2012 and when Neptune moved into your sixth house of service, detail, structure, uh, which is Pisces, it's possible that you have felt a lot of demands on your time and a lot of give. Then Saturn came along to replicate Neptune a year ago and perhaps the tension has amped up a little bit, whereas Neptune could have made you sacrifice him from the good of your heart. Now it's become a little more tiresome, particularly if people have taken you for granted. So as much as you've really been working hard, have you been working hard but not felt quite emotionally connected? That's possible with Saturn in the six. Have you had quite a lot of uh, details to deal with? Uh, details that have proved to be quite wearing, not so creative. You know, you often are a creative person because of your ruler being Venus. And perhaps the sheer uh, mundane routine of life has felt a little bit wearing at times. But the great thing about Saturn in the sixth house is it pushes us to improve things, make those small but important marginal changes which all build up to something bigger and more substantive. So Mars comes along and I feel that if there is someone around you who tends to take you for granted domestically or at work, always thinks you'll be the good egg that will cover that shift or do that overtime or do that job that no one else wants to look at, Mars can inject into that a real extra passion, but a passion that knows when to say no, because Mars isn't so much about sacrifice, remember, it's about ourselves. It's about the first house in terms of Aries, or it's about how we're very invested in terms of its rulership of Scorpio, sex, shared money. But the sixth house, Virgo, is where we need to be virtuous, but Mars is a bit impatient with all that stuff. It wants action and it wants, it wants to feel the response immediately. So as it meets Saturn, that could see you really getting exasperated if people are being awkward or picky or irritable over small details where your ability to see the big picture and weigh things up, of course, is the stuff of astral law. So if you do encounter a job's worth uh, someone who's awkward over a minor issue, you may find it more difficult to keep control of your emotions. But what Mars can also do in its combination with Saturn is remind you not to work too hard or work out too hard on the things that aren't necessarily right for you. So it can be a moderating influence in a positive way. And with all those energies in your seventh house, the key at the moment is definitely your connections to others. So you're needing to feel appreciated, particularly for those sacrifices that you're making all the time. And Mars can see you find your voice if you don't feel seen as much as you should. Scorpio, having Saturn in your fifth house over the last year, how have you found that? Saturn in the fifth house of natal horoscopes is not usually a bunch of laughs. It means we have to really work hard at the part of life that's supposed to be light and easy and frothy and fun, where we socialize, where we demonstrate our creativity and artistic talent. But the great thing about Saturn is it does give a reward. And if you've applied yourself, your ruler coming onto Saturn can help you to see that. Also, Mars then goes past Saturn and forges an amazing link with Uranus and Jupiter from the 19th of April through to the 21st when those two go into the conjunction. So even if your love life went through a bit of a stormy patch and there was frustration and uh, various things were said in the heat of the moment over the next week or so, you can come out the other side. But the key is understanding that with Saturn, we don't get unless we give. And even though it can feel like everyone's cooling out us, Somewhere or another, just ask yourself, are you attracting that energy in any way because of your own approach? I don't know. Only you can answer that question. But if you really want to showcase an amazing talent or strut your stuff, believe in yourself. And Mars applying to Saturn is asking you to put any doubts to one side about how gorgeous you are, how alluring you are, 
how amazing it would be for anyone to be with you, have maximum self-belief over this next week or so. Sagittarius, since Saturn arrived in your fourth house, there may have been quite a pile-up of demands when it comes to where you live, in terms of connecting with your emotional well-being. Um, maybe family responsibilities have stepped up. Maybe you've had a child, or maybe someone uh, older in your family has needed your support. Maybe there's been property or accommodation challenges. Maybe there's been a lack of space, something that's incredibly important to you. Mars comes along really, and in your personal uh, solar fourth house, could make you a lot more prickly if you feel that other people are leaning on you too much and not being so conscious of your strains and your demands. So Mars in the fourth house for you can see you more outspoken, perhaps a little grumpier. Your mood could be a little bit up and down over the next few days. But I feel it also reminds you that being a fire sign, you have to express passion. And if you're not expressing passion, and Saturn in the fourth house is about as big a passion killer as possible for you because of the water of Pisces, Mars comes along and can kind of push the balance back in your personal favour. It's still a complex and potentially testing influence and it may be that someone close around you is pressing your buttons a little bit, but if you do need to articulate your opposition or your observations, you can do so better now. Capricorn having Mars, which is exalted and therefore ascended in your sign, applying to your ruler, what's that about? Well, for the last year, you may have found that people you normally rub along with have started at times to respond to you differently. Or is it the beliefs you have? Or have the neighbours changed and you've not found the new people so easy to be around? Or have you found that your uh, interests have changed in terms of what you're reading or even what you're watching on the TV? Have some things lost their sparkle? Have other things become much more serious? Has there been a falling out with a sibling? All of these things are possible with Saturn in the third house. Mars comes along, Mars in the, in the third house, wants to speak up for you, wants to uh, prop up Saturn's reticence and tendency to think a little bit like your glass is half empty, to urge you to find your fire. Um, if you've got ideas that are important and you've found yourself lacking a little bit of energy or self-belief to express them, maybe at times just your nervous system has felt run down, you've needed a lot more sleep, or you felt edgy. Mars comes along and can be a reinforcer, but it can also mean that if there is someone around you that's irritating you, it may be more difficult to keep your feelings under wraps. And Mars in the third house can be more impatient and fire out comments in a quick way, but it won't be dull, that's for sure. Aquarius, since Saturn, your traditional ruler, moved into Pisces a year or so ago, you may have felt that the general financial environment that most people are dealing with has been particularly impactful on your situation. Or have you felt less valuable somehow? Or have you started to doubt your self-worth? All of those things are possible. Equally, you may have started to take more responsibility for spending. You may have become less frivolous, more inclined to be cautious about planning things. Maybe you've made uh, some contingencies for future times. All of those things very sensible. That's where Saturn can come back to you. But at the end of the day, Pisces is a water sign. You're a logical sign. You're an air sign. So at times, the things that you may have enjoyed in the past, like good food, may have lost a little bit of their luster or their sparkle. Mars comes along and gives you a lot more desire, essentially. And it has done since March the 23rd, but if you're encountering anyone at the moment who's not being very fair over money, particularly because you've got a lot of energy in the third house of ideas and beliefs, and Mercury's in retrograde, chances are your exasperation may run very, very thin because you feel this has been going on for some while. And if there has been almost an entrenched unfairness 
that you've been dealing with around a situation, the chances are you're going to be wanting to find a way out. And the way out could be by connecting with new people, new situations, finding a new job or someone who will buy your work, who will really appreciate you. So you can develop a lot more motivation, but certainly if you do experience someone who's playing hard to get, being difficult, entrenched, only seeing it from their viewpoint, they may find that your air can meet with Mars's fire and with Saturn's very uh, harsh take to stand up for yourself in a right good way. So Pisces, since Saturn moved into your sign around about a year ago, you may have found that you've had to let go of some peripheral strands and interests and just really narrow your focus on the things that are really important. Having Saturn in our own sign is like the first house. So maybe your physical vitality has also been lower, particularly if you're born in the first 10 days of the sign of Pisces, you may have been much more aware of that limitation. Now what can happen when Mars applies to Saturn is any frustration you can be feeling can be triggered much more immediately. So you could be irritable over the next few days. But equally, if you have been starting to reorientate your interest into something that does require a lot of application, a lot of time and a lot of patience, which is Saturn, Mars can give you a lot of lift. It can give you heft to get things done. It can give you that extra drive and passion to dig in, stick at it. Don't give up on something that's important to you. So this application of Mars may be very timely for you, even if your irritation with people who don't get what you're trying to do could increase quite markedly. And of course, with Mercury in retrograde in your second house, if someone does owe you money at the moment and is playing a little bit of a game, you're not really getting to speak to the decision maker, they're not answering your emails or, you know, it's a, an employer that's not respecting the change of rate to your job, that kind of stuff, you're going to be much more rugged and robust in terms of standing up for what is rightly yours. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for uh, join. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Wishing you all the best in this mighty clash of the malefics. If you've yet to do so, please like, comment, share or subscribe.